Alright, so if you've ever wondered how to give the characters in your book a little bit more character, I'm going to show you how to do that from small moments in the text. Then you can sprinkle these small moments of characterization into your text and over a longer period of time it'll really help your reader get to know your characters without having to dump a whole lot of information about them in one go. This works really well with flash fiction and short stories too because short, small moments are all you really have with that. But equally for novels, over a long period of time, as I said, these little moments can really build up to shape a character in a really nice way. So a lot of the time when writers think about characterization, they mainly think about giving their characters a big backstory. And then sometimes they'll do exactly that. They'll veer away from the main plot, which is what the reader is engaged in at that moment, and they'll give you a load of backstory or a big flashback section about how a character became the character that they are. It makes sense to want to show those defining moments to your reader so that they understand your character better. But taking a big segue away from the main action, especially at the opening of your book or the opening of a chapter or the introduction of a new character, can be a bit jarring and it can lose your readers. But don't get me wrong, it's definitely important to have that backstory in your book that gives depth to your characters, that makes them three-dimensional, makes them feel like a real person. Brevity and depth seems like a bit of a mismatch. In practice though, you actually can have it both ways. You can add some of that character and that depth into just tiny moments throughout your book. Things that your character says, small actions that they take, even their body language. Then those subtle details can land on a reader in a way that they don't even realise is happening, rather than making them read paragraphs of backstory that they might not be that interested in. As I usually do, I'm going to use an example from my own writing to demonstrate this a little bit. I'll read it through quickly and then we'll look at the characterization that I hopefully got across and why it hopefully works. This is the opening to a chapter and the first time we're introduced to both of these characters. Oliver listened to the crackle on the line, the distance. Years ago he used to think it was birds on the wire, somewhere out in the dark. Now he knew better, but he still didn't know what it was. He looked at his watch, turned it to catch the light. He got the time difference wrong, but it was too late to stop calling. Oliver, a gruff voice said. Not a question, a response. Yeah, Holly, how did you know it was me? His voice filled the lock up from corner to corner, checking to see if it was watertight. The fluorescent light above him flickered like he'd woken it up. He figured, it's gone midnight, who else would drag an old man out of bed? Shit, did I? No. Oliver rolled his eyes, but he needed to help. And it goes from there into the rest of the scene. Let me draw your attention to some of the characterization here. We're gonna focus particularly on the character of Harley. So from this small passage, we actually learn quite a lot about Harley, but I didn't really tell the reader anything. It's not from Harley's point of view, it's from Oliver's, and I didn't describe his physical appearance or anything like that. Yet we still know an awful lot more about him just from those few lines. The characterization comes from what he says. So let's have a look at the text again. We learn he's older than Oliver. We can assume this because he calls himself an old man. Maybe he's not that old, people tend to exaggerate their own age, but He's definitely older than Oliver because Oliver seems genuinely worried that he might have woken Harley up. So that's characterization. We now know his age relative to Oliver's. Harley's more senior, which when we look at the last line makes sense if Oliver's calling him for help on something. There's more characterization we can assume from this as well. For example, we know somehow that Harley lives alone because if he'd had somebody with him, he would have mentioned them and said who else would wake up an old couple or something along those lines. Harley reveals his personality in a couple of other ways, just with that one line about having been woken up. When Oliver presses him on it and asks him, shit, did I? Harley says, no. Well, what does that tell us? Well, let's look at what we already know. He's an older man, he's in a different time zone from Oliver, he's up late, sitting by the phone, and one of the first things he does when Oliver calls is kind of mess with him. This is an insight into his personality. Why would he do that? Maybe he's just a bit cheeky, maybe he just likes messing with people, hell, maybe he's just a little bit bored, but that wasn't really my aim here when I wrote it. In my mind, he's kind of protecting himself. By telling Oliver that he woke him up, sorry for the confusing pronouns, Harley's kind of getting ahead of any questions Oliver might have about that, and any assumption Oliver might have that the old guy would be in bed by now. It's his way of saying, I'm not done yet, I'm still here, I can still think, don't write me off. Some of this meaning we found by digging really deeply into the text and analysing it, sure, that's true. But quite a few of these details we learned about the character from a surface reading of a very short scene. Hopefully this demonstrates how you can use dialogue, both what your characters say and what they don't say, to add characterization. An important thing to remember, which really helps with this, 
is to give your characters an agenda for every conversation that they have. Don't just have them talk about the plot point in order to move it forward. Give them something they want out of the conversation which is separate from that. When was the last time you had a conversation with someone that went exactly how you thought it was going to be and you both got what you needed out of it? It happens but it's rare. More likely there'll be a bit of interaction between the two, a bit of pushing and pulling. It doesn't have to be conflict by the way but just talking around a subject is often more realistic than two characters talking exactly about what's going on. And if those two agendas that you give each of your characters in a conversation don't quite line up, that will make way more compelling dialogue. And dialogue is a huge part of characterization. I mentioned before you can add characterization with small actions and body language as well. Here's an example from the same text but different characters a bit further on. Letwin had a few ideas but he kept them to himself. He took his notebook out and wrote the license down hauled himself onto the back of the truck. Give him the keys, Denny. Denny rolled his eyes and fished the keys from some dark pocket. Letwin caught them one-handed against his chest and opened the driver's door. He brushed dust off the metal plate so he could read the VIN number. The part I'm talking about here is how Letwin catches the keys. I could have just said, Letwin caught the keys, or better yet, I could have just had someone hand them to him. That would have been perfectly functional. But to explain a bit and to give you a bit more context, Letwin's a small town police chief. This is the first time we see him. I wanted to give the reader a certain impression of him. Have you ever seen someone catch keys one-handed against their chest? It seems like a nothing detail in itself, but there's depth behind it. To me, if someone does that, it tells me a few things about them. Even basic things. They have good hand-eye coordination. Maybe they're a little bit more on the athletic side. Maybe they're good with their hands. Also, there's a kind of confidence to that gesture. Most people would throw two hands up trying to catch something. And there's something almost kind of cocky in just using one and catching it against your chest. All that from one small action, one little piece of body language almost. If I'd just said Denny handed him the keys, we'd have lost all of that characterization. The reader doesn't have to think about why he caught the keys one handed against his chest, but they'll see him do it and that'll create an impression for them. When you layer this type of thing through your work, these almost throwaway feeling sentences, they add up to build a picture of a character for your reader rather than having to spend so much time, as I said, just building a backstory and dumping it in the text. You might think, yeah, I can see how that works, I can see how that adds value, but it doesn't tell me what the backstory actually is of the character or what actually happened to them. That's true, but I'd encourage you to think about why that event or that past has impacted your character. Because if you're just really desperate to get across that something happened in this character's past life that was traumatic or horrendous, there's a good chance you might be more interested in the actual event than the effect it had on your character. The results of it, how it changed the character, how it shaped them into who they are now, that's the more compelling part, that's the characterization. Show the effects of what happened through your character's words and actions rather than just telling us what happened. And the best time to use these little moments, these little actions, is at the opening of your story or the introduction of characters. Just as your reader's getting to know your character, that's when this is the most impactful. Let your reader know how the atmosphere in a crowded room changes when your character walks into it. Don't tell them your character's bad tempered because they don't like people. If you have any questions about characterization or any really good examples that you want to share, leave them in the comments below. I make a new writing related video every Sunday and Wednesday on my channel. They're all designed to help you get started with writing if you're new or to help you hone your craft if you're a bit more experienced. The point is to stay motivated week by week. Hit the subscribe button and you'll never miss a video. Thanks so much for watching.